Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about analyzing the Windows Registry for evidence. I want to thank the good people at HackersArise.com who wrote this article that I used to help build this lab. The name of the article is called Digital Forensics Part 5 Analyzing the Windows Registry for Evidence. In our previous lab, we looked at how we go about acquiring a forensic copy of the Windows Registry. To do that, we used a USB install of the FTK Imager. We created a forensic copy of the Windows 10 Registry. We saved the registry files to the same USB drive. And when we left off, we had mounted that USB drive up inside of our CSI Linux installation. If you would like a very detailed guide, a cheat sheet of exactly what is stored up inside of the Windows Registry and what the values are, you can go to DFIR Training and you can get yourself a copy of their Ultimate Registry Forensics Cheat Sheet. This tells you everything you ever wanted to know about the Windows Registry. And from a forensics point of view, this would really help you understand where to find a certain piece of evidence or information that you would be looking for inside of the Windows Registry. In this lab, we will be looking at some of the more common locations up inside of the Windows Registry where a forensics investigator would go to find some of the more common evidence that a criminal using a computer would generate. So let's go ahead and get started and we're going to do this by going over here to the application launch. We're going to go down here to computer forensics and inside of computer forensics we're going to scroll on down until we come to the forensics registry editor or FRED. Go ahead and launch that. Many hackers like to crack a local wireless access point and use it for their intrusions. In this way, if the IP address is traced, it will lead back to the neighbors or some other wireless AP other than their own. But if and when that hacker is eventually caught, usually when they start to take credit for something on the internet, they start posting and boasting to their internet forums for hackers and Facebook and the like, Eventually, the FBI will come knocking on their door, and they will confiscate their computer. To see what wireless access points have been used with this machine, we can go up here to File, and we're going to open up a hive. In this particular instance, we need to look at the software hive. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Now, once you have that open, just scroll on down until you come to Microsoft. Open that up. Now, go ahead and scroll on down until you come to Windows NT. Go ahead and expand that. Go to current version. Under current version, you're going to scroll on down until you come to network list. Go ahead and expand that. Next, you're going to expand profiles. Here you see the GUIDs that have been accessed on this machine. You can just start going through them, and you can see what networks this machine has been a part of. Here we see a wireless access point called Sky Broadband. And you can scroll on down here and you'll see some other networks that have also been accessed. Here's another one, sdw Cranebill. So whatever network or wireless access point this machine has been a part of will be found under the subkey Profiles. So as much as the criminal may deny having access to someone else's wireless access point, if you find it up inside the registry, they had access. The Windows Registry tracks plenty of information about the user's activities. In most cases, these registry keys are designed to make Windows run more efficiently and smoothly. As a forensic investigator, these keys are like a roadmap of the activities of the user or the attacker. One of those keys is the recent docs key. It tracks the most recent documents used or opened on a system by the file extension. Let's take a look at that. So to see what documents our suspect has created or has been looking at, we have to go up underneath the profile. 
Now to do this, we're going to go to File. We're going to open up the Hive. We're going to again go over here to the FTK image location. And we're going to open up our Protected Files location. Now I have to go up inside of the Users container. I'm then going to go to the Users profile, which is in this case XPAT. And I'm going to click on the ntuser.dat file. From the left window pane, let's scroll on down to Software. Under Software, let's scroll on down until we come to Microsoft. Under Microsoft, let's scroll on down until we come to Windows. Underneath Windows, let's scroll on down until we come to Current Version. Under Current Version, let's scroll on down until we come to Explorer. Under Explorer, let's scroll on down until we come to Recent Docs. Now here you can see all the different file extensions. So if you want to see what's going on inside of the documents, what documents have been created, you just scroll on down until you come to Documents. So here we see dot .doc. If I click on that, we get a look at all the documents that have been created or have been opened by the user. So you can scroll on down through this list. Let's go back and move this over just a little bit. And as you go down here, underneath the hex viewer, you will see the letters as they appear in the title of the saved document. And you can get an idea of exactly what documents this individual has been opening and looking at. Now under HK Current User, we can also find what URLs this individual has visited. This is also information that we can pull from this particular hive. So again, let's go to Software. Let's scroll on down to Microsoft. Underneath Microsoft, let's go to Internet Explorer. And underneath Internet Explorer, let's find our type URLs. And over here in the right window pane, you can get a list of all the URLs that have been accessed by this user recently. The Windows Registry will store the URL starting at number 1 all the way up to number 25. And though attackers do have a number of ways to hide their IP address, change their MAC address, or spoof an address, the Windows Registry will store the information of what IP address was used by the attacker at a certain time. Information about what IP address has been used by this machine would be located underneath the system hive. So let's go ahead and go to File. Let's open up a hive. And again, let's go up inside of our USB drive and let's find our protected files and let's open up System. Once you have the hive imported, scroll on down to you come to Control Set. Expand that. Underneath Control Set, Expand Services. Scroll on down until you come to TCP IP. Expand that. Go into Parameters. And lastly, you're going to expand Interfaces. And let's move this over just a little bit. And you can see all of the different interfaces that have been assigned to this machine. Now if I click on one, you'll see that we can find the information that the interface is currently using, either through DHCP or as a static configuration. And here we see the IP address that has been assigned by the DHCP server and the IP address of the DHCP server. And you can scroll on down to all these different settings in here and you can find all the different IP addresses that have been assigned to this particular machine. As a forensic investigator, we often need to find what applications or services were set to start when the system starts. Malware is often set to start each time the system restarts to keep the attacker connected. This information can be located in the registry in literally tens of locations. We look at just a few of the most commonly set keys where this can occur. The most common location is going to be up inside of our software hive. So let's go ahead and open that up. Once you have the software hive loaded, scroll on down, you come to Microsoft and expand that. Once you have that expanded, scroll on down, you come to Windows and expand that. Under Windows you're going to expand current version 
and under current version you're going to scroll on down to you come to run and over here in the right window pane you get a list of all the programs or executables that are being ran at startup on this machine and so the next location that we can look at is the run once key now if a hacker just wants the software to run once at startup the sub key may be set here here we don't see anything that is scheduled to run once but if there was malware that the hacker wanted to run this might be a location that you'd want to look at under the system hive we can locate all the services that are scheduled to start when windows starts up so let's take a look at that real quick again let's go to file let's open up our hive for system once you have the system hive opened up let's go to current control set let's expand services and here you see all the services that are currently installed on this operating system so if a key is set to 2 that service starts automatically if it is set to 3 the service must be started manually and if the key is set to 4 that service is disabled so you have to go through each one of these keys and you have to look at the performance over here we see that this one has a number three assigned to it this particular service is scheduled to start manually and you can go down through here and you can see all these different services that are currently either scheduled to run automatically or not often the suspect will use a flash drive or hard drive for their malicious activities and then remove them so as not to leave any evidence the skilled forensic investigator, though, can still find traces of evidence of those storage devices within the registry. They just have to know where to look. Indicators of previously attached storage devices can be found up inside of the system hive. So again, let's go to File. Let's open up that hive. Go ahead and expand your current control set. Underneath the current control set, go ahead and expand the enum. Underneath the enum, scroll on down till you come to the USB store. Go ahead and expand that. And underneath here, you're going to see all the different devices that have been attached or are currently attached to the machine. You can click on properties and you can take a look at all the different devices that are currently attached. Here we see underneath this USB store key. The indicator that I currently have attached that Toshiba USB drive that we're using to access the registry keys up inside of my installation of CSI Linux. Underneath the same key, the USB store, we find evidence of a Wi Fi adapter that has been attached to the machine. So if we're finding evidence of devices that were previously attached that may no longer be present, then that tells the investigator that they need to locate that hardware, that USB drive, because it's probably going to contain more evidence that they can use in the building of their case. The registry is a depository of volumes of information on what happened on a Windows system, and by learning our way around it, we can construct or reconstruct the elements of a crime that that machine was used for. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about analyzing the Windows registry looking for forensics evidence. You got any questions, you got concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.